Many of you guys know 3ds Max as a solid 3D software, but many artists agree that it is not the case when it comes to animation. Not because it is bad per se. I would argue this is the case because it was intentionally left behind by Autodesk when it comes to the animation side of things. Now, let's take a quick look at 3ds Max roadmap of development. All you can see over the last four years is basically 3D modeling and rendering features in addition to some updates here and there, which is a great thing since they are updating the software and getting more features in the first place. But when it comes to animation, the only exception would be Motion Pass, which allows you to display different controller types and work with list controllers, and use the active subcontrol position to display keys and tangents. Many artists actually use Max for animation, but probably it's not the main reason why they do this. But it is a nice perk of using the software, and they would be very happy if they see new features or at least updates to the solid animation features and tools it already has, like the CAD animation system. So today, I will share my thoughts with you about the state of Max in animation and why I think it is being left behind in this regard and why some big VFX and game development studios are still using it till this day, including for animation purposes. Before we continue, I want to talk about Geometry.store, which is the online market for procedural high quality and customizable rail clone assets and libraries for 3ds Max. And Geometry just announced the launch of its new website, which is more secure, faster, and with an entirely brand new look. The main page is now cleaner, showcasing new features, bundles, and guides. While unlike the shop's previews for all different products, it is simple and straight to the point. The new library function takes the cake. You can double-click on any item in the library, and it will open the web browser with the shop. And now, if you get a new item, you will download the whole library, enabling you to preview the whole models inside Max. Geometry also launched a free implementation for the Fusion plugin that will come with two packs. And although it doesn't need Rail Clone and has basic functionality compared to it, you will still get the same procedural experience. And it also comes with the same PBR materials Corona and V-Ray have. If you want to check out the store, follow the link in the description down below. And don't forget to use the Black Friday code BF2024 for some early deals. And now back to the video. First of all, Max continues to hold its ground as a reliable tool in the industry and remains important for many studios and freelancers across various endeavors, such as in ArcViz, VFX, but most importantly in game development. So I'm not here to dispute the obvious, but some new people to 3D, especially in the last few years, will be surprised by the discussion of using Max for animation in the first place. But the fact remains, Max was one of the most used 3D software in animation, especially during the late 90s and early 2000s, with many iconic franchises such as the Halo series and the World of Warcraft benefiting from its tools and features when it comes to animation. Max was designed as an all-in-one professional computer software, which was excellent and still is in many fields, and offers a unique set of tools for creating 3D models, textures, and animation, which is the topic of today. However, its character animation reputation has drastically declined over time, especially for high-end film and game development projects. But now, it has been going through a downfall in animation for more than a decade. A natural reaction to this would be just switching to another software, like Maya for example. And in the view of many people, this is the leading tool for character animation, as you might expect. But what's frustrating is the potential of 3ds Max that it still has. And to understand that, we can break it down into two parts. On one hand, you have the usual methods that you can find in most 3D software, in the form of Character Studio. A character animation toolset that is primarily intended for use with bipedal rigs, though it can also work with multi-legged characters, and long story short, it consists of three major components. 
First, you have the biped builds, where you can combine different animations to sequential and overlapping motion scripts or layer them together. Then there is physics, which uses the biped armature to animate the character mesh, simulating how the mesh flexes and bulges with movement of the underlying skeleton. You can also animate crowds by animating groups of 3D objects and characters using a system of delegates and behaviors to create crowds with highly complex behaviors, to a certain extent, of course. While that alone can be impressive, the most exciting character animation tool within Max is arguably CAT, short for Character Animation Toolkit. This toolkit offers a fast and easy way to build and adjust rigs of any kind, in addition to supporting animation layers to save each part of the animation separately. And it includes a muscle system to help animators create skin when it stretches and deforms, among many other features. However, the most interesting feature in my view is its procedural animation system, where each bone in the rig contains a set of parameters, such as twist, knee angle, and weight shift, which can be adjusted non-destructively. As you can see, the sad part about Max for character animation isn't the lack of tools, because with CAD alone, it offers a unique hybrid workflow that is hard to find in any other software. As it finds a sweet spot between giving animators manual control over their animations while also using the power of proceduralism. But if you take a look at Autodesk's website, it feels like traveling back in time a perfect reflection of how this system has been left behind, with little to no progress made over more than a decade. Despite its potential, CAT has not seen any updates or improvements which it deserves, leaving users with an outdated functionality and interface. Besides, Autodesk has never explicitly stated the reasons behind their actions, at least not to my knowledge. However, if you read between the lines and examine the frequent updates of Maya in terms of character animation, the most logical theory or the most logical answer is that Autodesk is strategically prioritizing Maya for this purpose. And honestly, I can see where this is coming from. It makes sense after all, and most people agree that Maya is the best animation software because it is widely used in the industry. And by focusing on a single tool for that purpose, Autodesk has a better chance of creating a better product and maintaining its dominance in the sector rather than splitting its resources. Besides, it wouldn't make a sense for a company to rival its own software or develop the same tools for a couple of different software. And the proof is they killed Softima, which was a great software back in the days. Actually, some professionals still use it because it is that good. On the other side of the spectrum, this has meant that Max has been left behind, creating a gap between it and the other modern character creation software. So, over the years, programs like Maya, Blender, and Houdini have increasingly taken the lead by offering advanced features when it comes to the animation workflow. But for the sake of comparison, let's take Maya as an example. Maya's human IK system is just impressive. It is a pre-built character rigging tool that automates the rigging of human characters. And you can also find similar alternatives in software like Blender or Cascador. In addition, it is also much more advanced at skinning and weight painting. Besides, Maya supports animation layers natively, which allows animators to stack, blend, and mix animation clips in non-destructive manners however they want. It also has specialized tools for facial animation that allow animators to create more impressive and detailed facial rigs, such as blend shapes, as well as better time sliders and a non-linear animation system. Generally speaking, I think what made Max fall behind compared to Maya at least, or many other 3D animation software, is how the other software are equipped with modern technologies and offer a deeper set of tools for rigging which is constantly maintained, in addition to skinning and weight painting, which allows them to handle mock-up data, retargeting, animating and posing, and they have a rich tool set for interpolation, animating curves, cleaning, and many, many other things. Despite all of this, it is not a dead end for the software. 
Max as it stands has a ton of useful features when it comes to animation because many studios continue to rely on it. However, the most notable one has to be Ubisoft, which used it for many franchises, including Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, and Rainbow Six. There is not much documentation about the topic, but I managed to find an old publication about the first Assassin's Creed game, where an animation project manager at Ubisoft back in the day stated that for games, they relied heavily on motion capture, and for Assassin's Creed, the motion builder to 3ds Max pipeline was a really efficient one. And for those who don't know, Motion Builder is another software from Autodesk, which is used for virtual cinematography, motion capture, and traditional keyframe animation. So they capture the motion data on their stage, clean it up in Motion Builder, and then bring it to Max. Bipod was actually a big part of the workflow, since it delivered great animation quality. It also mentioned that their character and animation technical directors took advantage of the extensibility of 3ds Max through MaxScript to adapt the pipeline to specific project needs and further maximize its efficiency. On top of that, they also created a direct link between Max and their game engine, which allowed them to get data from the game engine into Max and from Max back into the game engine. Surprisingly enough, Ubisoft continued to use Max even in their recent games, which shows that it is a reliable tool even for animation. And even with a lack of updates, it still does an amazing job when it is used by professionals. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.